Welcome to Rising Woman Leaders, a safe space for women to thrive in community where their voices and stories are heard. We're a sisterhood supporting each other to live our dreams and embody the sacred feminine to restore balance on our planet. Join us each week as we return to the unconditional love and guidance of our heart and our womb. I'm your host, Meredith Rom, and I invite you to walk this path of beauty, devotion, and service with us. here with Leanda Swain and she's a dear friend and psychic intuitive guide (laughs) she's also just an amazing speaker and facilitator Mm -hmm. I first met her in a friend's house where Mm -hmm. she led a workshop about the power of prayer and that's you know part of what we're going to talk about today so how are you doing today? Yay. Welcome. <laughs> oh, I feel so happy to be with you. It feels, I was just closing my eyes feeling sisterhood and, and the power of the grace that comes with sisters and the name of devotion and prayer and love and just remembering how connected we are. <laughs> and so many of us are, you know, to each other and just coming back in this lifetime to share deep wisdom, you know, that that is in our hearts, but also that we're learning as we go. And so I feel really happy to be here and in my body and just in love with this moment with you. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, there's, there's really a sweetness and, and um, it's been a while. It's been a few years since Mm -hmm. we really like dropped in and I know we saw each other at Burning Man and um, yeah, I've had some, some beautiful experiences over the years. And I, I'm curious just maybe to start with like, these last few years like Mm -hmm. what they have been for you what have you been learning how have you been growing um maybe we'll just start there (laughs) yeah beautiful oh my goodness well you know it's really interesting I've been a little quiet for the last few years on I've noticed online and part of that has been I, I feel like I've gone through um more of a shadow phase of life of really looking at shadows I know that it's, it's a massive theme right now, um, and it just has been a theme in my world for a few years. And I've really been learning about sacredness and how uh, we can not treat ourselves in sacred ways and how we can disrespect ourselves or abandon ourselves or betray our own self or, you know, merge, lose ourselves. You know, I was really in some big relationships that, Um, I really saw how I would either deny myself of me or, you know, allow treatment that didn't feel healthy and good and, um, you know, really hurt my own self by receiving that back from another. And it's just really interesting because I never thought I'd go through some of the things I did go through in the last few years, but it's also allowed me to become a lot more, um, empathic or not empath- very empathic empathetic to <laughs> always more empathic as we as we grow but more empathetic to what a lot of women and men experience that I, I would have never known you know it's such a wild world to be a human I feel like a lot of my journey is really becoming more human humanized and really feeling the pain and the suffering of the human experience but then also the joys and the, the highs and really giving myself a chance to see the range of what that looks like. And um, yeah, it's been actually quite challenging. And then also at the same time filled with so many blessings last year, I got to live in Kauai, which is like my, if I could ever name a place on the planet that feels like a soul home, like my number one soul home, it would be Kauai. And I was there for almost a year and I didn't expect it. I just followed my desire and intuition and the mother energy there. And, you know, it's a very intense place to live because it feels like you're kind of on in a ceremony the entire time you're there. So I feel like it's not really for the faint of heart on a level, even though it's so lush and yummy and soft and beautiful and abundant. And it also will really bring you into your deepest 
um, lessons, I feel. Mm -hmm. And I've talked to other people and they've had a similar experience. When I went there, I said, I didn't know this was going to happen. I didn't expect this. And then it was like, boom, here is what you need to look at and don't look away. And um, so actually these years have been actually more on the challenging side, but I'm going into the deepest core wounds that I've ever had Mm -hmm. and facing them. And um, speaking of prayer, I feel like if there's anything that has sort of helped support me in just either finding people who can help me through it or finding my own inner clarity or strength, even just for a moment is prayer. You know, I would always continue to pray um, please send me someone or please help me and um, thank you so much and thank you for this abundance and this gift. And I really lost my faith in spirit and faith in prayer, but I would mm-hmm. still pray. I was using mm-hmm. prayer to help me believe in prayer again, which is very interesting to do. You know, it's when you know you're like, I know that, you know, Jesus and many ascended masters and spiritual teachers have gone through these moments of doubt, despair complete cloaking of light and then how do you get through those dark times so it's been a very interesting journey but one that i'm starting to bear the fruits of more clearly now yes yeah we can always see in hindsight like why it was necessary um and i've really heard that about quiet and experienced it i've i've been there i think i think uh, almost two weeks um Michael and I went to Kauai actually before our wedding and, and wrote our vows out there. Why man? Wow. Um, it's like the grandmother energy, that, that yes. island. And oh, uh, yeah. they say the souls come in through there too. It's powerful. Totally. <laughs> they come in from there. They leave from there. It's amazing to feel that that island has so much activity. But what a gift to write your vows there. Oh, my goodness. There were so many couples getting married on the island. We'd always (laughs) see them. And I was like, this is a great place to get married, (laughs) for sure. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Could you tell us, I mean, maybe that year in Kauai stands out, but one of your darker moments and how prayer helped you? Mm. So beautiful. Great question. Do you know what comes to mind is um, I was going through some really um, dark relationship challenges and I really lost myself in the relationship and I had never in my conscious awareness had remembered a time where I'd lost myself in anything complete. You know, when you, you're like, where did Leanda go? Where did Meredith go? Who is this person? Like what happened? And um But it affected my psyche. It affected, I felt very depressed. I felt very lost. I felt very confused. My psychic abilities were really strong. I was getting a lot of psychic information that was leaving me feeling very disembodied and ungrounded. Um, And I wasn't feeling centered. And I was feeling... I lost a lot of weight. Like I was just... It's almost like rejecting the human experience. And... um, I would, even in those moments, I would just say, please help me see clearly, or please help me see a different way. One of my favorite prayers is please help me see a different way. Help me see through a different lens. Because a lot of times how we're perceiving a situation is creating our actions and how we talk to ourselves and and what we make it mean, what the make the moment mean. And please help me see this differently. Please send me help please help me, you know, um, please send me a sign. And do you know what happened was I had a sister, I'm part of a sister circle, and we meet every month on the new moon. And now we do it over Zoom. You know, we start doing them over Zoom. And I just broke down in the circle, like in a way that I hadn't really broke down before, you know, that kind of like snots coming out of your nose and you're (laughs) heaving and you're crying and you're just like, I'm losing it. And I had a sister reach out to me. She said, can we support you? you know, somehow, like after the circle. And I felt really resistant to receiving the help because I felt embarrassed, I felt ashamed, and I felt weak. And, um, but something in me said, receive this help, (laughs) to say yes. And so sister, believe it or not, it was sisters who came forward and I um, 
spoke to a sister every day for a certain amount of time just to connect in and receive love and receive support. And that was like a miracle for me that I never expected coming through. And I feel like when we pray, we might not receive the the miracle or the the help in the way we think we will. And I didn't expect it to come that way, but man, I felt the power of sisterhood in that moment and what we can offer for each other um, when many women come together to support one person or to support each other. So I would say that was one moment where I really noticed prayer worked and I was surprised by the outcome of how the prayer manifested. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And so you had someone to talk to or check in with you every day for a period of time. Yeah, it really, there was something about that for me. I feel like, you know, whenever I'm going through a hard time, I really only need love. You know, when you ask, like, Mm -hmm. what do I need right now? What do I need right now? And I feel like the most important thing, the most powerful force on this planet in this dimension is love. And when someone genuinely just loves you and they're just calling because they love you, not because they're going to get anything from it, not because they feel obligated, not because they think it's the right thing to do or someone asked them to do it. It's just pure coming from their heart, genuine, free choice. It, it's like healing bomb for the soul. And I do feel in our culture, there's a lot of conditional love or con- conditionality playing out and what if we get to really receive unconditional love just from heart to heart soul to soul that is always what i need to help heal you know my inner child or my adult or whatever is needing them needed in the moment so just feeling their connection and also i'm sure anyone listening if they have sisters who you know they love i mean we have some amazing women in our lives that are so talented and resourced and skillful and wise and i just felt like i hit the jackpot being able to talk to all these women every day and i was just like whoa what if every woman had this you know what if every woman had this wisdom which is what these podcasts do you know we help each other through all these different outlets but yeah it was very eye opening to me yes it's interesting. We so often have that conditioning of I can't ask for help, mm-hmm. I can't receive help. And that actually might be that first hurdle of, okay, I am just thinking of like a friend who went through a heartbreak to be given that. And sometimes people don't know how they can help, but like that's such a, if if there's someone out there listening who's going through one of those hard times, you might need to ask for the help because I, my experience is mostly that everyone's like so wanting to help, even totally. if it's just a text message, you know, checking in every so often, that can be huge. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes we just don't know to do it or don't know to ask for it. Oh, totally. I feel like asking for help has been a real challenge for me. I know for so many women, it's a, it's a real, um, whatever their, they make it mean, you know, if we don't ask for, if we ask for help, what does that mean about us? But I have also found that when I genuinely ask for help, I feel like people are so happy to show up or at least direct me to someone or, you know, give the guidance. And I find myself wishing when I can intuitively feel a friend of mine or a woman who needs help, but they're not asking for it. I honor the, you know, the boundaries of me not saying, Hey, listen, I, I feel like you need help. Can I help you? I try to, I notice there's some part of me that's wanting them to ask, ask, ask me for help, you know, reach out. And sometimes I'll say that, but I, I feel like if we all got in the practice of asking for more help and we always have a choice, we can help somebody or not. We can follow our truth, but yeah, asking for help is so, and that's what prayer is. Prayer is really a lot about asking for help. (laughs) That's what I was just thinking. (laughs) It's that humility (laughs) of just Mm -hmm. to say like hey I don't have this all figured out on my own like Mm -hmm. please help yeah totally it's very humbling it's funny I think of Marianne Williamson you know she's been like she was my one of my first real mentors at a distance so to speak but I've met her a number of times and talked to her a bunch and you know in those moments that I've seen her and I'm always asking the same question to her in like six different ways she's always giving me the same answer every time (laughs) I ask her (laughs) But she's, you know, she always says that whenever you feel um, fear in your system or doubt, it's that you're putting too much of your trust in just you in your human physical form and not enough trust in spirit that's working through you 
that includes you, but it's not just you, you know, allow yourself to sort of just only putting all your faith in what your mind can come up with or what your past experiences have showed you include spirit, include spirit to come in and show you a whole new way that you never even expected. And then your wisdom can come in and, and marry spirit's wisdom and then you can create a new experience. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, can you tell us how you first found prayer? Yeah, I, I was raised Catholic. So I feel like we were taught to pray growing up in school. But prior to that, maybe my grandmother taught me about prayer. My mother might have taught me about prayer. I just remember being a little girl praying at night. I used to be so afraid, actually, funnily enough, I guess when we as kids started to learn about death for the first time, like someone could die. I could die, you could die. I used to go to sleep saying, please, God, help me wake up tomorrow. <laughs> I think that was like, I went through this phase of like, thank you so much for this house or whatever, you know, thank you so much for my friends or, and, you know, please help me wake up tomorrow. Mm. And I just remember that moment of uh, kind of laughing at it. But yeah, it's a, there was some part of me that really trusted as a young kid that there was some force or something that was aware of me and that I was in relationship to or connection with. And then, so I can't even remember a time where I wasn't praying. I feel like I've always prayed, I've trusted in prayer my whole life. That's why I feel like my very first workshop when we met was about prayer because a, a, a friend of you and I um, asked me a question before I did the workshop. He was like, well, when did when did your spiritual journey really start for you, Leanda? Like, when did it really turn things around? Like, what really helped you in the end when you went through your dark moment? And all I could think of was prayer. And he's like, then that's what you're going to talk about. I was like, I can't talk about prayer. I felt so shy and, like, it wasn't valuable and it wasn't powerful enough. And, you know, it wasn't this system that one could follow. And, you know, how am I going to put this into a program? But that was my truth. And I was like, it's about prayer. And I feel like... Um, yeah, I found it at a young age and I've been using it ever since. But I will say that my my dance with prayer has not always been total faith. You know, I've gotten angry at God and projected lots onto that, you know, God or the source or spirit. Um, and I've gone through my dance with prayer of questioning it. Is anything happening? Is this thing on? You know, is anybody listening? And then realizing it is work, you know, working. What does that even mean for it to work? So I've had lots of moments of doubt and questioning, but I ultimately in the end, there is always a miracle that comes. Always, every time even if it's just a moment of peace in, in a big week of distress, there is a miracle that comes through. Yeah. yeah. How would you guide someone if they had, have never prayed before? Mm, good question. I decided recently to come up with, I do this with my clients who are interested in going deeper with prayer. I um, came up with a little bit of a structure and to help at least follow. I feel like prayer is very individual and it's very specific to you and how you feel most resonant and connected. And um, so I start with acknowledging whatever you would call source or spirit or your higher self or the goddesses, whatever you feel most aligned with. Currently, right now, I'm connecting to love. I pray to love the frequency of love, which is also, you know, source and different form. And, um, and then once I do that, I always start with gratitude, genuine gratitude, whatever I'm genuinely grateful in the moment. And especially in those darker moments, even if I'm just grateful for, you know, um, my breath or I'm just sitting here looking at rose water, I maybe just love rose water. I might just go, thank you for rose water. You know, something that you're just in the moment sincerely grateful for. And um, then I move into if there's something I'm needing help with. I ask for guidance. I ask for support. And then I take a moment of silence just to receive. There, sometimes when you're praying, you can actually receive guidance. You can receive. You're in a dialogue when you're praying with source. <laughs> and so you can receive. And then I uh, say another thank you. And then I, you know, close a prayer with amen or and so it is. So I would... I would begin if you were just beginning and you've never prayed before, you're not really sure what your relationship to prayer is. Um, it really starts with a sincere, genuine heart. 
like a genuine desire to connect to source within you and outside of you. And when you just start with that genuine, I really want to connect to the part of me that knows all. And I want to connect to my love. And I want to connect to, you know, something bigger than myself in this moment. And that is where it starts. Immediately the prayer just activates. And then from there, I would trust yourself and offer thanks, ask for help, offer thanks again, and then trust, surrender, and let go and know that you've been heard. And you can pray through speaking, you can pray through dancing, you can pray through chanting, you can pray through drinking tea, you can pray through drumming. You know, there's so many ways to pray. And um, that's where I would start with a genuine heart. Yeah. I love that we're talking about this because I'm realizing prayer is something I do a lot in my life and it's not really something I talk about in the public realm um and just as simple as like there's this thing i need to make a decision about and it doesn't i just don't know what to do and to just humble myself and just say hey Mm -hmm. like universe please help me with this i don't know i'm gonna offer it up to you and just like keep doing that and ultimately the solution like kind of lands in your lap mostly Mm -hmm. um but I had a I had one memory uh, come up that I'd like to share of, of a moment yeah. when prayer was really powerful for me. I had just moved to Sonoma County from Berkeley with Michael, my partner, and we moved to this cottage and we didn't know anyone up here. We had a month to month lease in a cottage and we just knew that we needed to move out of the like seven person house we were in um, in Berkeley and needed some more space and followed the guidance to be here and about six weeks passed of not having any friends like no community and um and it in a way it was we had like wanted to have more space but suddenly it was just like wow I'm really missing my friends I'm really missing Mm -hmm. people and what do we do and and uh and I really started to feel the pain of that, of like being in a new place and unfamiliar and not knowing how to meet people. And there was one day I was driving and I just like pulled over on the side of the road. And I think I just cried. It was Mm. just like open to the pain of not having a friend. Mm. And um, I just prayed for a spirit to bring a friend into my life and to, and, um, You know, then went on about my day and it was the very next morning I had this intuition to to go to this very early yoga class, like seven, started at like seven or 6.30 in the morning. (laughs) I don't ever usually go to those classes and and showed up and there were only three of us in the class. It was me and this young woman and this older guy. And um, at the end of the practice, I just said to the young woman, like, hey, I just moved here, like, you know, (laughs) and that person ended up being um, my friend Mackenzie. I think you know her, Mackenzie. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. (laughs) And she, um, we chatted a little after. She's like, oh, yeah, I'm new to the area, too. And but she had more connections here and we exchanged numbers, ended up getting tea later that week. But she was like the the opening to meeting all the other friends that I met here. Wow. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just wanted to share that, just wow. how potent that can be. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100%. You know, it's reminding me of, um, I was reminding me of actually probably how I met you. I, before, when I was in Philadelphia, that's where I was raised. And I remember I was waking up spiritually. I was very young. I think I was like 18 or 19 at the time. And I was hanging out with people in their 40s and 50s who were talking about spirituality and all sorts of healing modalities. And I I didn't really have anyone my age that I felt super connected to in any way that I could talk to about. I was very different than my... um, I was becoming and having a different experience than my high school friends and my college friends. 
So I felt very alone. And I remember closing my eyes and doing a very similar thing. And I just said, please, God, send me like-minded friends. So I asked, please send me like-minded friends. <laughs> and then Rachel Rosito, who is, I've known her since we were 14. Our families are eerily connected and spiritually. Um, she's like one of my, my best sister. And um, we reconnected after just a couple years of not crossing paths. And she introduced me to um, the art of living, which I know you are also connected to. And we got connected to the art of living organization. And she invited me to do this breathwork training that they, they offer. And I said no to her first. I was like, I don't need that. And then she asked me again the day it was starting and I happened to be driving right by the building where it was and I just said okay and I walked in paid on the spot took took the class and then I made started making all my friends you know all my (laughs) like-minded friends and then ended up moving here to San Francisco she was kind of my doorway too and you know opened me to a whole new world which then led me to meeting you and going to Burning Man and you know so it's so funny how yeah prayer I can really bring you your soul friends it's how you can come through. Yeah, I love that. So cool. I know. Uh, um, well, I'm curious too about just your psychic abilities and like how that developed and uh, what that looks like for you when you receive psychic information mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. if people are, want to develop that or are developing that and don't know what to do with it. Like how totally. I'm curious your journey. Totally. Wow. I feel like, so, you know, everyone... I'm making a very big blanket statement, but I do feel like so many of us are having more psychic experiences and the psychic ability on the the plant is growing and people are becoming more sensitive. And to me, I really resonated with this understanding of psychic abilities as the five senses um, activated to a higher level of receptivity. And so um, when I was younger, I was always empathic. I just thought it was normal. So I didn't, I thought that everyone kind of felt what I was feeling. I could really feel people's feelings and like they were my own. Um, so that really led to a lot of poor boundaries and, you know, all sorts of those kinds of challenges. But at the time I didn't know any better and, and, um, I was able to feel people. And then, um, over time I got sick and college and then I was walking down the street in Australia. I was studying abroad in Australia for six months, which is where I was born. And um, a man was walking towards me, and he was probably in his 40s or 50s, and it was kind of 4 or 5 o'clock at night, and it was getting dark, and I felt kind of afraid because he just locked in on me and was looking at me as I was walking by myself. And then he stopped me, and he said, you know, you are – oh, he asked me directions – to a particular place and I told him where it was and he said okay and went to turn around as if he was walking there and I kept feeling to talk to him I don't know why I kept feeling to talk to him and I was like are you gonna walk there and he's like yeah and I was like it's like five hour walk and he was like well I have time and had this twinkle in his eye like he knew something I didn't and I was so confused and then he stopped me again and he said you know you're an empath And I said, what does that mean? He said, you feel other people's feelings as if they're your own. And I said, okay. And then we walked away from each other. And then I turned around and he was gone. Like poof. (laughs) Like gone. His physical form was not here anymore. And it's not like he could have just run around a corner. It was a straight street. And then I ran. I actually ran to the apartment I was staying in and called my mom. I was like, I think I just experienced an angel, like just come down and body for a moment and leave. And it was, that was not a time that I was really into this stuff. So I, it really opened my, me up, kind of triggered and planted a seed. And ever since then I became so fascinated with empathy and understanding myself and understanding psychic abilities. And when I was sick, um, it actually ended up leading me into, I received a Reiki session actually from Rachel's mother of all people. And, um, I felt to learn Reiki and I became a Reiki master. And then during my Reiki sessions, I, I felt like there's got to be a faster way to help diagnose what people are going through. There's got to be a quicker way to be able to see the source of someone's issue instead of spending years trying to figure it out. And I want to be able to help them see something faster so that they can take whatever necessary actions they need to take to heal it. So I practiced and I really practiced 
all my skills. I was able to see, <clears throat> I started with seeing colors. I was seeing symbols in my mind's eye. Um, I was getting gut feelings about people. All of a sudden, I could really feel how people were feeling. So I was able to speak to that. And so all the abilities I had just started activating because I was putting attention on them and I was practicing them. So I was born with this gift, <clears throat> but then also... I put effort and attention and practice for years and years and years on it. And so um, I was helping people heal. I started a healing practice and then I jumped to just giving psychic readings <clears throat> and which I never thought I'd ever do. And so I, from that time, I've just been for the last like 13 years have been tuning in to people um, intuitively to help them become more intuitive themselves, but also for them to see, blocks they might have that they can't see or paths that they can take that might help them heal, um, you know, a little bit more holy. And I receive information a couple different ways. My very first way I was receiving was through the body. So I'd be able to feel how somebody would feel in their body. I could feel like gut feelings about people, feel what they were feeling. And then my second strongest psychic source is clear audio, or clairvoyance, which is seeing. I'd be able to get flashes in my third eye of, you know, spirit, where should I go eat today? And then I get a flash of the restaurant and what grocery should I buy? I'd see blueberries or I'd see a broccoli head or, you know, I would play with it. Like the mundane things I would ask. And then with people, I, you know, I would, they would ask me questions and I would see flashes of, oh, I, I actually see cancer in your body. And like, oh, wow, I, I see your partner two doors down from you. It was just really interesting to see all that. And then, but what I really wanted to work on was my clear audience hearing. Cause I, there's something in me that likes to do things quickly. So my lesson is to slow down always, but I just felt if I could hear, you know, spirit just basically say, Meredith needs to plant roses in her garden, you know, or like <laughs> Meredith just needs to spend 20 minutes at this river and pray this way every day. And that will help her, you know, just tell me clearly. <laughs> and so I started to practice, um, clear audience, which basically is just putting your attention on it. And I started hearing. So I, I receive information now through all of the circuits, through seeing, through hearing, through feeling, and through knowing. And when I'm giving someone a reading, I open all of those circuits to just be triggered whenever they need to. And I really trust that I'm, I'm also at the same time discerning, is this true? You know, is this true information? Because not everything that you receive is totally pure and clean. Your ego might come in and talk. Or sometimes there are deceased loved ones who are around you that could come in and talk. And, and I feel more certain and more trusting of just pure source information versus from a disincarnated being, what they would call that. So there's a lot of intentionality in when I'm working with someone and really making sure I'm clear uh, to be able to be offer clear guidance. But I currently receive information in all the ways and whatever way the information comes, I just trust it. Hmm. And that's a muscle to trust what you get. Yeah. You know, you're, it's, it's just a lot of practice to go yeah. into it. Yeah, it sounds like, like if you were to guide someone in just practicing, it sounds like just putting your attention on it mm -hmm. and then trying it with little things. Like exactly that third eye any other tips you would say just yeah. getting started i would say if you want to get started um meditation is really powerful just to keep your mind clear to some degree so having some kind of a meditation practice and then what i always suggest people do when we start working together is get a little notebook or you could use your phone i always think it's kind of cute to have a small little notebook you can carry with you and then you actually write down for, it could be seven days, it could be two weeks, but write down every time your intuition spoke to you, every time you had a gut feeling about something, every time, whether you followed it or not, you're just acknowledging the moments that the intuition spoke or you had an idea that came through to you after you asked a question that really helped and was spot on. And um, another thing you can do is whenever someone's calling you, if you sort of intuit who it is before you see that's something to write down too so you want to just pay attention to when it's always happening it's just we don't put our attention on it but when you start putting your attention on it then it gives your mind evidence that something's happening here and yeah. so then you develop more of a belief and trust in it 
Mm-hmm. And so it just helps to, I think it helps to activate your reticular activating system in your mind that, you know, for instance, when you get a new car, if I got a, a new red car, I'd start to, without trying, see red cars on the road more than I would see blue cars on the road. Mm-hmm. So you're just wanting to put your attention on it and allow it to become a little louder. louder. It's turning up the dial. Um, the other thing that has supported me a ton with allowing my intuition to strengthen or those abilities is dancing. I really find that moving the body helps you to become more receptive and that's key to becoming more intuitive or opening to your psychic abilities is first intending that you're getting clear guidance from unconditional love for the highest will of good and good of all praying before you receive guidance and then dancing the gift of dancing is that when you let the music move you you're letting yourself be uh, you're letting yourself receive the music so you're going into a receptive state and I find that when we're in that open receptive feminine energy it's a lot easier for us to get out of our logic and intellect and more into our right brain into our bodies and that's where you can really feel intuition come through loudly so I suggest people dance for one song a day that they love it could be anything but they've got to love the song like super jazzed about it could be a slow song, but a song that they really love because that opens your heart. And then just dance and give yourself to the song. Just let mm-hmm. yourself surrender fully to the song. And that practice over time will help you trust your body more. And slowly over time will help you feel comfortable and receiving, being in more of a receptive state. Oh, I love that. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yes. We we need that, those tools of just opening our intuitive abilities and making choices from that intuitive guidance. Um, do you have any gu- particular guides you work with? Any Ascendant Masters question. or angels or guides? Or- hmm. I work with, I actually intend just to connect to source. I imagine this like, how I like to try to imagine it, sometimes it helps me see, is this, this beautiful, clear light that is my intention is at its source. And then I allow that to come through me because I feel like guides and goddesses and ascended masters are all flavors of source that share a particular kind of frequency that you may need in the moment. You know, in, in one moment, you might need Kali to come in, the energy of Kali and just cut illusion with fierceness. But then maybe source wants to express itself through Kuan Yin another time where it's just gentler and softer and more compassionate. So when I'm giving a reading to people, I go to source. Um, But then sometimes during a reading, I will focus on the higher self. So I'll just focus on my higher self and their higher self. And sometimes a guide will show up. And if that happens, then I speak to it. And um, and then the other uh, beings that I work with are in my own personal practice. So for me personally, when I'm not as much working with other person people, would be Mary Magdalene and Jesus and um, my higher self and new new ascended masters that might come in to assist me. Isis was a teacher of mine, you know, energetically for a span, which was very interesting and deep experience. And then, you know, now I feel really connected to Kuan Yin. And this is different goddesses come in for me in different moments. And so it depends on the time. I feel like it changes as we grow, but those are usually who I connect with. Yeah, love that. Yeah, and we're in a time right now, of, you know, great challenge. And yeah. um, also we were talking before about uh, like people opening to their yeah. abilities, but also like more spirit activity in general. Yeah. Um, what tips or guidance do you have for people that might be hearing, seeing, feeling things that are totally new and how to just work with those energies? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I would say that I have had a couple of friends, we were talking about this, a couple of friends reach out to me because they're having spirit activity and they don't know what to do about it. And the number one thing that I learned that helped me the most was that to always know that if you feel like you have these abilities that are opening up, that you're more psychic or more intuitive and you're sensing the unseen realms um, just as much as the seen realms, you can always command an energy to leave your space 
or move out of your experience where you could command a space to be in love. You can command um, energy to shift and change uh, and, and it will respond to you. So if you're experiencing, maybe you're feeling spiritual activity or you're an uncomfortable about it, you can actually say, thank you, please leave my space and go with light and love. And it will respond. It has to. And um, I would also say that if you're feeling excited by the activity you're experiencing or your intuitive psychic abilities, I would say um, start to journal about it, journal about your experiences so you're you're making them in, uh, more uh, more physical. You're helping yourself stay in the physical realm if you're opening up more energetically. I would say take baths with salt. That helps to clear your energy field and help you become a little more grounded. I would say work with someone who can teach you how to navigate. I work with clients a lot in this way, how to navigate your abilities as they wake up and how can you use them to help you discern what would be good for you in your life versus allow them to overwhelm you and feel feel um, kind of bombarded by intuitive information or sensitivity. And um, I just, the message that always comes through and is coming through today is just remember that you have so much power to claim your space and claim your energy and, um, and allow yourself to know that you're safe in your body and to do whatever you can to stay in your body and stay in. Think of your body. I love this analogy as your body's your home. And when we're sort of disassociated or we leave our body, our bodies are vacant and anything can come in. And so you want to do whatever you can to have some embodiment practices like um, dancing or breath work or rubbing your feet at night with lavender, um, getting some sage and clearing your space and clearing your energy, saying a prayer before you go to sleep. We were talking about this. Just to, I pray that my space is clear. I pray that my dreams are clear. I pray that I am surrounded by angels. I always call in angels. Please surround me at all times. You know, the world is really chaotic in some ways and also rebirthing. So how can we trust in the process? So please, all the benevolent forces that are around me, even if I'm not clear who they are yet, please come and protect me and surround me and walk with me and show me where to go. Um, and then from there, you follow your intuition. So just remember, you have a lot more power than you think you do when it comes to your sensitivity and the unseen realms. Yes. And I know you're going to be leading prayer circles, or you have been already. Yeah. Can you tell us about those and why you felt called to do that and what they look like? Yeah. I woke up in February before COVID happened with a really clear message. It was, came through me. I don't always get messages this way. And they just said, the voice said, start prayer circles. It had me bring out my phone first. It was like, start prayer circles. Eight people here's what it's going to be like. Here's what you're going to talk about. Here's how it's going to go. And I was like, again, I was like, really? Is that what we're going to do? And then COVID hit and I realized the power of prayer for people just to come and gather and feel safe and develop a strength and confidence that our souls know on some level what's happening right now and to connect into the part of us that is feeling secure and safe and knowing and opened to the unfolding of life and trusting and change. And um, so what I'm now creating, I feel guided to create, I'm um, offering it coming up here in August, is um, a, a three-month experience where I'm going to be taking you through 12 weeks of all the different ways you can connect in with prayer and creating your own way to pray that you feel more connected to source within you, your own soul, and you have a you leave with a prayer practice of your own and um, guidance from some beautiful experts I'll be calling in to, to share information with. So we'll be talking about prayer and chanting, um, prayer through dance, prayer through sex, uh, prayer through the elements, uh, prayer through creativity. You know, what are, what's your way to pray and how are you going to allow yourself to un unleash your soul in this moment of time um, through the power of prayer? And so that will be, I'll, I'll share a link to with you. And, you know, if people are interested in coming in a sacred circle, it will be eight people. And it'll be a very intimate time where we come together and we pray together. And my intention is that you receive this dose of healing energy. For me, prayer mm -hmm. is just healing and cleaning 
I think about it like a selenite crystal, like a crystal that just cleans you for an hour. And what that means is it helps you release negativity, release your doubts, release your fears, release your old patterning, and then find a way to do that for yourself over time. Mm. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So we'll include the link in the show notes if anyone wants to look more into that. Awesome. Um, do you have any anything else you want to share? Any closing words? Anything on your heart that mm. just feels like it wants to be shared or mm. spoken to the people listening? Yeah. <laughs> I just feel really grateful for you and your work and what you're doing. And I've witnessed you grow over all these years and it's Mm -hmm. so inspiring. And so I, first thing that comes is just deep gratitude and bow to your consistency and your Mm -hmm. willingness to show up for yourself and in the world and show up this way to help all of us, you know, be seen, but also heal. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's one thing I thank you and bowing to you and to everybody listening What's coming through in this moment is that you're not alone, De- you know, deeply. You're not alone physically in the world, but you're also not alone spiritually. Like we definitely have these beautiful angels around us, always protecting and guiding us, and they're just a call away. So asking them for help is essential at this time. And don't be embarrassed. It's okay if you're embarrassed. I guess I, I will allow yourself to feel all the feelings and ask anyway, ask for yeah. help anyway, you know, feel everything and just feel, feel grateful that um, prayer is being brought to the surface a little bit in the collective right now. Cause it's a powerful tool. Yes. Would you lead us in a prayer? <laughs> yeah. Close? Oh, Love that. Of course. Yes. We can all close our eyes. Oh, <sighs> And take a nice deep breath in, filling your lungs, expanding your chest, and then exhaling down into your spine, to the base of your spine. Take a deep breath in again, relaxing your shoulders and your arms, and exhaling down into your spine. And once more, breathing in. Exhaling out of your mouth. And just relax your breath, allowing your breath to move however it desires in your body. Calling in all of our highest holiest beings to be above us, below us, beside us, in front of us, and behind us. Anchor us more deeply into the love of the embrace of the Divine Mother, the Divine Father, Son, Daughter, Sister, Brother. Allowing us to feel held in this moment by the sacred elixir of love and light. Allowing all our cares and worries to wash away in this moment for we are held by love and by grace. We pray that grace enter into our lives in this moment releasing any shackles we may have on our wrists and our feet, on our heart and any other other area of our lives, allowing us to know love more deeply as a result of this moment, bringing us closer in intimacy with our divine nature and our sacred heart, allowing ourselves to know spirit on a deeper level and trusting ourselves more deeply. Thank you for this sacred moment. Thank you for this breath. Thank you to the waters, the fire, the earth, and the wind. Bring us home and bring us to peace. May angels walk above you, below you, beside you, in front of you, and behind you all this day and night. Bless our planet. Bring us into harmony and holiness. And so it is. Amen. Mm -hmm. Take a deep breath in and out. Letting the prayer land in your cells. Receiving the gift of grace. May it be so and so it is. You can open your eyes. And so it is. 
Thank you so much, Leander. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen to this episode. If you liked it, share it with a friend or leave us a review on iTunes. You can also follow along on Instagram at Rising Woman Leaders and sign up for email updates at risingwomanleaders.com to be sure to receive all the new and inspiring content. Thanks again for being here. It's an honor to walk this path with you.